I'm waiting on some parts and some other stuff to continue this Cummins Explorer swap. So I figured in the meantime, what I might do is try to clean up this mess of an engine bay I have here. Because the 12 valve Cummins is a much simpler engine than the four liter that came out of here, I can actually get rid of a lot of these connectors and things. In order to figure out what I need and what I don't need, I really need good information on what all of these connectors and everything do. What's the best place to get this sort of information? Well, it might as well be the factory service manual. You could probably get away with a Chilton's or a Haynes manual in order to do this type of thing, but the factory service manual is always gonna have more information and better information than one of those. I mean, even by virtue of the fact that it's five times larger than any of those manuals, so of course they're fitting more info in there. The most of the factory service manuals in this year were, were electronic, at least the ones I've seen. So I need to sort out how can I get a service manual from 1994 to run on my computer. And I did. Let's see how I made that work. In order to do this wiring project, I needed wiring diagrams. To find wiring diagrams, I was actually able to find a factory service manual for my vehicle. Sometimes you can find discs for these on eBay, or sometimes if you know where to look, you can find them for free on the internet. But I had one problem. My Explorer was a 94, and because it was a 94, the factory service manual for it only ran on Windows XP. I run Windows 10, so this was an issue. To get around this, I chose to run a virtual Windows XP machine on my Windows 10 computer. This is actually a lot easier to do than it sounds, and I will link an article in the description that I followed in order to be able to do this. If you have a newer vehicle, you probably won't have to do this step since you won't need a Windows XP machine. Like, for example, I also have a 96 to 99 Ford manual, and it runs fine on Windows 10. Here's the software I ended up using. It's called VirtualBox, and this is the Windows XP desktop that VirtualBox allows me to use. You can see that I can open the factory service manual here. It has what it calls the EVTM, which is the Electrical Vacuum Troubleshooting Manuals. It's just a very short version that, it's a very short overview to help you troubleshoot. This has all of the wiring diagrams that I would need in order to figure out how to do this, and it also will tell me where all of my components are, where the connectors are. It will even give me views of the connectors that tell me what the face of the connector looks like, what the pinout is, all of that good information that is incredibly helpful when you're doing wiring like this. Additionally, if I go into the service section, I could even rebuild the whole engine for this vehicle just based on this manual. And it is very, very detailed. If you have one of these manuals, you're basically going to be a guru on whatever your particular vehicle is. You might be able to figure out this information if you were to rebuild a hundred of these engines, but by using the factory service manual, you know all this information on the first one that you rebuild, and it's a very powerful tool. Often the biggest thing that separates a dealer mechanic from a shade tree mechanic is just their access to information. It's just having a factory service manual like this. If you have a vehicle that you're doing any real work on, I would highly recommend picking up a service manual. Whether it's the factory or whether it's just a Haynes or a Chilton, you almost can't overstate how valuable they really are to have, and I would highly recommend going and picking one up for your vehicle. Now that I showed you where I'm getting my information from, let's go back to the garage and start wiring. All right, I've gone through and I've marked basically everything, figured out where almost all these wires go. There's a lot of this crap I'm gonna be able to get rid of. Before I cut any wires out, I wanna at least make sure that the, that the body electronics, like the windows and all that stuff are all working as intended. And I wanna make sure I can at least roll this thing over with the key and all that before I go cutting wires out so that I know whether or not there was an issue in the wiring I did, or if it's just that some of the stuff was unplugged. So before I cut anything out, I want to take the Cummins wiring harness and merge that in with what's left of the Explorer wiring harness. This is the Cummins wiring harness. There will also be a lot of the Cummins harness that I need to pull out. Like for example, it did, it came with all of this stuff that controlled the automatic transmission. I went with the manual and it also came with a bunch of connectors that went to the computer. 
So I need to pull this harness apart and keep what I need and remove what I don't need. The internet told me it only takes two wires to run a Cummins. What the hell is all this? So now that I got a lot of this crumbled up sheathing off, you can see it kind of just crumbles in your hand. It's in really rough shape. Now I can separate out the stuff like the plug-in for the computer and the automatic transmission controls, pull all that out of the harness so that I can really simplify the harness. So let's do that. All right, I got the wiring harness shrunk down. All of the grid heater stuff came off independently. That was pretty easy. I cut the signal wires, which turned the grid heater on. I'll have to find a way to turn those on later. This is basically what's left out of the wiring harness that I need. It's the fuel relays. It's the connector for running the fuel shutoff, uh, some grounds, the battery cables. Oh, I kept all the AC stuff, which is right there. I do plan on having AC in this vehicle eventually, although it's gonna be difficult because the back of the turbo sits where the heater box is supposed to be, so I'll have to figure something out there. There's a couple small things I'll still need in here. Like for example, there's the fittings to run the fuel heater and a couple small things like that. There's also a couple sensors I would like to use, such as the engine coolant temp sensor and take air temp. It would be nice to be able to retain those somehow, but that will come in a later video when I talk about how I want to do all the gauges and everything in here. For now, cut a whole lot of bulk out of that harness, so that's nice. I need to get this part of the harness all wired in and loomed and stuff. And then at that point when the Cummins engine harness is connected to the Explorer harness, I will test everything and see if the electronics are working. And if they are, then I'll start cutting down the explore harness as well to get rid of some unused stuff. So let's go. One of the circuits I need to figure out is this is the relay that'll turn on the fuel cutout. This is the fuel cutoff for the Cummins. This is what stops fuel being pumped when the key's off and allows it to be pumped with the key on. This relay and this wires is what runs this. This is the wiring from the Cummins. However, I think I can integrate this into the explore wi wiring harness pretty easily. You remember a bunch of videos ago, I had to make the fuel tank for the Explorer that used to be a gas fuel tank. I had to make it work for the diesel Cummins. And one of the things that I did was I removed the fuel pump that was in it. And when I removed the fuel pump, there was a couple wires I ended up cutting that I said I might be able to find a use for later. Well, this is that use. There is a fuel relay here already in the power distribution box and I can just tap into that. I've got the connector for it here, and if I just remove two of these wires that get the signal from the fuel pump relay, then my fuel cutoff will work with the key just like I need it to. And then the other two wires that are in this connector go to the sensor, and I did leave the sensor attached, so I'll leave the sensor wires in this just as they should have been stopped. So that's how I'm gonna deal with that part of the Cummins harness, as I'm just gonna splice in the signal wire. I'll probably run a dedicated power and ground for it just because it will probably work better that way, but I will use the signal wire from that used to be the fuel pump in order to run my fuel cutoff. In order to get the fuel pump relay to run this fuel cutoff solenoid, the next thing I need to do is remove the, the old engine control computer out of the circuit for this. So right here, this wire, this light, blue orange wire, the computer will ground that, which is what tells the fuel pump relay to run. This is how the computer makes sure that when you turn the key on, it only runs the fuel pump for a few seconds and then it stops unless the engine's actually running. Well, this computer is gonna have no idea whether the Cummins is running or not, so I just need to get rid of the computer in this circuit. The way that I did that was I took this relay and I figured out wire on the relay was the one that switches it, they put a nice little diagram on the side. And I figured out this wire here is the one I want, the one that goes to the computer. That is this light blue orange one. If 
I turn the key on and come back to the computer, then there's a light blue orange wire in there. And you'll notice if I take that wire and jump it to ground, and hear a fuel pump relay click. If I turn the key off and jump it to ground, no click. It's exactly what I want. I want the key to control the fuel cutoff. I don't want the computer in the way. So all I need to do to make this work is I need to cut that wire and just ground it. That'll completely remove the computer from the circuit, which means that I can run the fuel cutoff with just the key. All right, got that ground added there. And now when I turn the key, hear the relay click. So now on to the starting system. I was up pretty late working on this thing, trying to get the wiring done, and I learned a couple things. The first thing was that it used to be an automatic, which means that it has a park reverse neutral safety switch. It only starts when you're in park or neutral. I had to find the connector for that and jump or two of the wires there. If you're wondering about soldering and everything and how that works, you can look at my video on when I redid the wiring on my car hauler. I did a tutorial on soldering and everything there. The other thing is that I figured out how I need to wire the fuel cutoff. When I have the hole-in wire connected to the starter solenoid on this, then it pulls in. And when I have the hold-in wire connected to the fuel pump relay, then it will hold it when the key's on and it will turn it and it will stop holding it. It'll turn it off when the key's off. So. The last thing was I wanted to make sure I got the starter wiring done and that was pretty simple. I have the starter wiring working. So now I know where to put all these wires in order to make it start and run, which is great. The other thing I realized though, is that I'm not even positive where I'm putting the battery or anything in here yet. So I wanted to stop before I get, before I run all the wiring and make sure that I actually know where it all needs to go. And additionally, I just got some other fun parts in the mail, so I want to throw those on. So for now, that's enough wiring. And in the future, once I have the front sort of on the car, and once I know where the battery is going and everything, I can get a better idea of how I want to wire and loom all these, and that'll help a lot. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and stick around if you want to see the next one. And thanks for hanging out with me in my garage today.